obvious reasons, this planning commission meeting is not physically open to the public. Limited staff are present in the council chambers and planning commissioners are participating remotely by a video call. Members of the planning commission can use the reaction choices in Zoom to indicate they would like to speak, similar to raising a hand. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8. It is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city's website and with the Zoom meeting link also available on our website. Our chief commission tonight is Victor. Public comment can be emailed or called into the planning commission. Members of the public may submit public comment once for each item. By email or phone call, you may not submit more than one email or call per item. There will be instructions uh, on the screen, but uh, just to review them, before the item you wish to comment on, call the phone number and enter the meeting ID displayed. Press the hash key when prompted for a participant ID. To raise your hand to make a comment, press star 9 on your phone, wait to hear that you are unmuted, and then make your comment. You will have up to three minutes to speak. If you are watching the meeting via Zoom, you can use the participant option to raise your hand and make a comment when unmuted by our moderator. For email comments, identify the item you wish to comment on in your email subject line. Email comments will be accepted starting now up until I announce that public comment for the item is closed. Each email comment will be read aloud for up to three minutes or displayed on a screen. Emails and calls received by outside received outside of the comment period outline will not be included in the record. Before we go on to um, oral communications, any members of the public who are going to be, want to make comments on items not on the agenda, please uh, send them in via email or um, uh, otherwise, and we'll have them when we get to that. So, next item is additions and deletions to the agenda. So, excuse me, as you speak, Will, I, uh, ATC crashed me out of the No, we were just going through the script. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, and, and the public comment instructions. So again, any additions or deletions to the agenda? We did receive two public comments on item 5B with, through, via email after the packet was published, and all planning commissioners should have received those through email. The Grand Avenue Pathway, two comments came in. Was that being, was that item going to be continued? No, um, that item is not being continued. The item that is being continued is four, I'm sorry, let's see. Um, it was originally, uh, is the ballers. For being continued, but that's not the case now, right? 4B is going four to be B. continued. The, oh, four B. the ballers, okay. yep. But 4B is being continued. But 5B, we did receive two public comment after. 5B, oh, after. Yes. yeah, okay. All right, so uh, then the next item is public comment, and that would be, as I mentioned, on items that are not on the agenda. We'll take uh, another 60 seconds or so to see if anyone has any comments they want to make. I am looking at the participants, and I do not see any hands raised for items that are not on the agenda for public comment. And Sean, do you see the email? We'll go on to commission comments, and then if we get any public comments that come in a little late, we'll go back to those. Do we have any comments from commissioners at this point? Comments. Hearing none, uh, staff comments. I did have one comment this evening. I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, Liz Nichols, who has been helping us out with the Planning Commission meetings, uh, this is her final meeting for helping us out with the Planning Commission. She is retiring after 18 great years of the city and her help has been much appreciated. 
So thank you, Liz. Okay, on, the, uh, the plan, on behalf of the Planning Commission, I share in that uh, sentiment. Uh, so next item is approval of the minutes for October 1, 2020. We are uh, moving forward on the minutes now. Do we have any comments, additions, corrections to the October 1 minutes? I move approval. Okay, do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Welch. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Uh, aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. People aye. And uh, aye. Chair. <laughs> the chair is just up. I do them. Okay. Uh, next, take, that takes us to the consent calendar. Um, we have two items on the consent calendar. One is uh, 201 Esplanade, and one is Capitola Village Bollards, which is up for uh, continuance, correct? Correct. I'd like to take those one at a time. Um, well, first, let me ask does anyone want to pull any of those from the agenda? Any member of the public would like a public hearing on either of those, and um, the second one, the capital of those bollards, is just to be continued. So if, if, if you have a comment on the substance of that, uh, you can save it for another night. So if you have any desire to have either of those heard by public hearing, please let me know. I would like to um, have 201 Esplanade uh, heard by public hearing. So we'll take uh, item 4B, which is the village bollards. And I think that uh, Commissioner Wilkin and myself are uh, recused from that. So Commissioner Ruth, you can take the vote, please. Okay, there's the vote to continue the bollards. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Roll call. Oh, roll call, I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner uh, Welch? Aye. Commissioner Wilkes? Excuse. Commissioner Christensen? Commissioner Christensen? Commissioner Newman? I'm recused also. And Commissioner Ruth votes aye. We need a vote from Commissioner Christensen to continue this item. I can, can you hear me? I? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So the motion okay. carried. Sorry. Did, did we need a motion and a second? Because we didn't get a motion and a second on that. Yes, we did. Commissioner Wells will make a motion that we approve uh, item 4B to uh, continue the capital board policy. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we did. Is it the second? I'll say. Okay. Thank you. Now, let's go back to 4A and 201 Esplanade and just have a quick public hearing on that. And first, we'll have a staff report, please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening, Fine uh, Cushion, everyone. Uh, this is 201 Esplanade for a, a new wall sign. It's a, uh, it's in the Central Village Zoning District, and it requires a sign permit because by my information, because it is a new sign, if that's removed the original. Uh, this is Tacos Marina. Uh, it's a restaurant at the eastern end of the Esplanade. Uh, the wall sign shown here is centered on their street frontage facing the Esplanade in a long way. The proposed sign, the wall sign, it has a total sign area of 32 square feet. The sign is made of wood with raised lettering and does not have any illumination internal or otherwise. As part of this application, the original sign that was on the two awnings on the front was removed. 
the applicant also removed an existing non-conforming menu box that would, would exceed the allowable size and replaced it with a aluminum menu box that does conform to the two square foot maximum size. And that's pretty much it with that. The staff recommends approval of the project based on conditions and approval of finance. Any, any questions of staff? I thought Commissioner Will, uh, I'll repeat a question that, that, that I asked Matt earlier and he gave me a, an answer which I guess is satisfactory, but thinking about it, maybe not. Uh, so the question I had before was, wasn't there a sign there before? And the answer came back, no, there was no sign, it was just awnings. But my question is maybe, maybe more general. I mean, that building's been there a long time. I can't imagine back in the days when it was uh, El Pirata or, you know, it's been a bunch of different things over the years, but there was never signage there. And if there was signage there historically, and you're just, you're just adding signage that's been there in the past, maybe not real recently, but in the past, does that even require a permit? Katie, uh, yeah, I can take that. Go ahead. Who is, who's that? So, so it's Sean here. Okay. Um, you're, you're absolutely correct. There has been and was up until Tapa Moreno moved in uh, a variety of signage. That signage has changed over the years. Pre the previous tenant had two awning signs, so the signage right on the front of the awnings. That did go to the Planning Commission and was approved by the Planning Commission. Um, this, if, if the applicant had so desired to replace the face of those awnings with a, their new uh, name or logo, they could have done that administratively. This was a proposal to completely change the kind of signage they have, which does require approval by the planning commission. Well, my question is really, if let's say the previous owner, which was the falafel, guy didn't have a sign with the Tacos Moreno sign, but the owner before that did and had a, had a sign exactly in that same spot, a wooden sign, the raised lettering, the whole thing. Does that like set precedent for that building such that even though it, it's changed owners a couple of times, Nevertheless, you would need a permit because it's been accepted that that's a good place for a sign that has been approved in the past. I can answer that one as well, too, Kate, if you like. Um, yeah, so it, it's not so much based on the property or business owner. It's based on what was there and and if it was there within a the time frame of, of abandonment. After a sign is removed or replaced by something else, whether it's through uh, just taking it down or a new type of sign was approved, um, there's a period, I believe, it's about six months of which, if it's not replaced, it's considered abandoned, and the, the entitlement to have that that particular sign is uh, not existing. It's revoked. That makes sense. Is that okay? The abandonment. In this case. It, it wasn't so much an abandonment as it was they wanted a new um, sign layout. No, I get you answered my question. Okay. No. All right. I had the question was, am I did I read this correctly that there was some uh, violation that brought this to uh, the planning commission, planning department's attention? So there was a sign violation. I can answer that too, Jay. Please. Okay. Uh, yes, there. The sign, as you may have noticed, the, the example we showed in the presentation was an actual physical sign on location. Um, the reverse order there is the result of a of a code enforcement, which they put the sign without getting the proper approval. We worked with the the business to get them to apply for a sign permit, and, and that's why we're here today. Okay, if there are no other questions, I'll open the public hearing. And do we know whether anybody uh, is planning to participate in? 
I'm checking right now for the participants on Zoom, and I don't see any hands raised. I'm now going to go to um, the public comment emails, and I'm also not seeing any new emails coming in. So there's no public comment at this time. Yeah, I'll conditionally close the public hearing if anybody shows up uh, while we're discussing it. Uh, we'll reopen it. Um, so. I'm the one who uh, removed this, and I guess uh, we can kind of go out of order so people know my, where I'm coming from. Is um, I don't have any problem with their sign. I have a problem with their not abiding by uh, our um, laws and regulations on a root kind of a, a pattern, which seems to be the story for this property. We had problems with the prior owner, and I'm up, I'm particularly concerned with the walkway. The public walkway, which they keep uh, filling with tables so people can't get by. And now the sign, and this business owner, I mean, I, I'm happy that they've come into town and they have a nice business that they're experienced. They have other locations, at least one other location, and maybe two that I'm familiar with. So, great. I mean, I, my question is how do we? get across to them that this is not like a total uh, wild west here and we need to comply with the uh, city rules. Has there been any communication with them about the uh, alleyway, any further communication? Chair Newman, I, I did stop by and speak with them at one point about uh, removing one of the tables. Um, explaining that with the social distancing that's in place, they are, so they're allowed to have the three tables and six chairs, but because of social distancing, it's pushing the tables into that walkway. Um, we had a very informal discussion. I can make that a little more formal, and um, we, we can also send out a letter and let them know. Cause oh. Is that what you're referencing in the back uh, facing Zelda's? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, uh, I've actually had some informal conversations with, I don't know, with the owner or someone works there or not. Now, I don't know whether it's just uh, lack of understanding or disregard, but I, I have a hard time approving anything for, a, uh, for an applicant who is in violation of rules important, what I consider the important uh, planning rules. So, so that's Coastal Commission requirement. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that they are currently not, not in compliance? Correct. If you try to walk through that, they, they have their tables that block the way. And that, that wasn't a COVID uh, exception? No. I don't know, is there a COVID exception to the Coastal Commission uh, access requirements? No, they actually, they, they were given more outdoor seating out front that they're allowed to use for COVID-19 purposes, but they still, you know, they've got a conditional use permit which allows three tables and six chairs off the back, but because of COVID and the need to separate, uh, have six feet between parties, which means nine feet between tables, um, it's pushed them into that walkway. So we can revisit that and you could this evening add a condition to the sign that they must be in compliance with their CUP for outdoor dining. You know, as well, part of the like Okay. Uh, let me then make that motion that uh, uh, we approve this with the condition that we uh, we add a condition to the sign approval that they're in compliance with, uh, with the Coastal Commission seating requirements. And access requirements. Access requirements. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Did we get anything more from the public? Probably not, but just in case. Yeah, no additional public comment at this time. Just for the sake of discussion, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I just don't know if it's relevant it is time to uh, assign um, permit. Uh, to me, it seems like enforcement was 
What did we do? We were taking the sun down at the end? Yeah. No, I, I get that, and I, I, I have the same feeling, but it's just like, I don't, they keep doing it, and I don't have any other <laughs> lever. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm all for uh, taking some form of action. I just don't know how relevant it is to uh, tie to the sign uh, permitting, but either way, I, I support getting the sign up there so it's done correctly and hopefully getting them on board to uh, understanding what the Coastal Commission expectations are for access. Well, don't, I mean, we have precedent for this, don't we? I mean, it's effectively, uh, it's a building permit of sorts. We're focusing on the sign, but when we approve a modification to a building, we take into account the entire building and we want to make sure it's all in compliance. So I don't see why this is so odd to have this condition. Did we get a second? I can't remember. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh yeah. So it's under discussion. Thank you. Yeah. I was just I was just creating discussion about yeah. applying those type of things to permitting this. Okay, point well taken. Are we ready for a vote? Commissioner uh, Welch. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Commissioner Welch. Aye. Commissioner Christensen, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Aye. Okay, and uh, I vote aye too. So that takes us to uh, public hearings. The first public hearing is 1360 41st Avenue. It's an application for design permit, use permit for mixed use development, adding two new residential commercial structure located within the CC Sony district. That a staff report. Thank you, Chair Newman. Sean, next slide, please. Existing structure at 1360 41st Avenue is a non conforming two story commercial structure previously occupied by Hamilton Furnishing. The lot is in the 41st Avenue commercial corridor, surrounded by one and two story commercial buildings. Next slide, please. Did you say two story? Uh, yes. Oh. I mean, it, it, uh, it has two stories, and then uh, the one, the helm building has one story, and then the office building on the corner is two stories. So there's a mix of one and two stories in that area. Uh, there is a large parking area behind 1360 41st Avenue that belongs to the adjacent parcels at 1408 41st, which is Helm, and the office building at 1350 41st, which is an office building. Uh, access to the parking area is provided by two driveways, one off of 41st Avenue and one off of Jade Street, shown here in yellow. Next slide, please. This is the existing first and second story floor plans. Uh, the second story is on the left and the first story is on the right. Uh, if you look at the left hand side, you'll see the existing upstairs office space. It's really not very visible from the street in the previous image, but that's the area that's been converted. And then if you look at the first story plan on the right, the existing retail area takes up the front portion of it. And then in the back, there's an existing uh, garage that was used mainly for loading and unloading zone. And then eventually, uh, garage doors were added. It was used for storage. Next slide, please. Here are the proposed first and second story floor plan. Uh, as you see on the bottom right, the uh, existing garage on the bottom right is going to be converted into residential garage parking spaces. That would be reserved for the residential units above. And if you look at the second story plan on the left, that uh, <coughs> previous office space is being converted into two residential units. Next slide, please. Under the Capital and Municipal Code, multiple family residences are a conditional use in the CC zoning district. The use may be permitted by the Planning Commission if the use is secondary to a principal permitted use, such as uh, commercial on the first floor, on the same lot, uh, subject to certain limitations, which are listed here. The proposed project involves the conversion of the existing floor area that does not change the ceiling height of the existing structure. However, the existing first and second story floor, sorry, first and second floor ceiling heights are both only eight feet. Uh, so they do not comply with uh, limitation number one and two. Therefore, the structure is legal non-conforming. Next slide, please. The municipal code uh, in the consideration section in 1760 
states that in considering application for a conditional use, the planning commission shall give due regard to the nature and condition of all adjacent uses and structures. Due to the limited size of the parking area behind the structure at 1360 41st Avenue and the close proximity of the parking areas on the two adjacent parcels, the proposed project has the potential for adverse impact on the availability of parking on those adjacent parcels. Next slide, please. The proposed parking also does not comply with the minimum number of parking, required parking spaces, minimum parking space dimensions, or the minimum covered parking space dimensions. However, because the proposed project does not add any new floor area or increase the intensity of use by requiring more parking than is currently required, the non-conforming parking does not have to be brought into compliance. The creation of a new residential use on the property, well, two actually, um, has the effect of reducing the number of available parking spaces for the underparked existing commercial use and has the potential to negatively affect the availability of parking on the adjacent parcel. Therefore, a parking study was conducted to analyze whether or not the nine proposed on-site parking spaces are adequate for a commercial and residential mixed-use land use combination under a shared parking arrangement. The parking study conducted by Kimberly Horn demonstrated that the nine proposed parking spaces would be adequate for a retail and residential use combination, which requires nine spaces, but would be one parking space short for an office and residential use combination, which requires 10 spaces. Next slide, please. A new office use in the commercial space at 1360 Police would not require any planning permits from the city of Capitola. So in order to ensure adequate parking for a potential office residential use combination in the future, the planning mission could include an additional condition in the conditions of approval uh, shown here, requiring a parking study on an adjacent parcel and a long-term lease of one additional parking space on that lot if it is found to have an excess parking space available. Next slide, please. So that staff recommends the planning commission review and approve the project based on the commission's approval and signs. Thank you. Any questions of uh, staff? Hearing none, I will there's the public hearing. And uh, do we have any uh, requests to be heard from anyone on this item yet? Yes, um, Bill Kemp, the architect, and also Steve Allen, the property owner. Um, I will, we'll start. Okay, and uh, so these are people who, uh, can we uh, patch them in? Yes, we'll see. Katie can do that. Uh, this is uh, Steve Allen, the property owner, and uh, Bill Kemp, the architect of the project, that are uh, their intake. Okay. Okay, Steve, you can now speak. Mr. Allen, it looks like you are unmuted and can we Mr. Allen, are you with us? I'm with you. Can you hear me, Chairman? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Commissioner, um, thank you for your time. Um, Steve Allen, I'm the managing member of the ownership of this property. We purchased this property about a year ago um, as an investment. You know, I'm a broker by trade. Um, I've, I've leased property on 41st Avenue all over Santa Cruz County for 20 years. I've never seen it as slow um, in finding new tenants as it has been you know, during the 2020 pandemic year. We've really struggled to find a commercial tenant that could lease um, the entire, you know, approximately 4,413 square feet. So having said that, I really like this project um, that they'll get out to put together. For a couple of reasons. Number one, it you know provides additional housing units, which we all know are needed. And number two, you know, my understanding is that the existing parking would be grandfathered, continue the office for retail use because it's historically been used. Um, but the Kimberly Horn um, parking study that the city had commissioned, you know, if it's, if it's residential upstairs and then retail down below, um, per the study, that would be a 40% on intensification of parking on um, office would be about a 33 percent reduction so we talked to the neighbors um they seem to be in support of it and you know the apartments upstairs would be much easier to rent and then the smaller commercial unit down would also be easier to lease so you know that's how i like the project um thanks for your time do we have any questions of mr allen other than mine okay uh, so 
there seems to be an issue in terms of the parking requirement for retail versus office on the downstairs portion. Is it your intent to be leasing it for retail or for office, or do you know? If you still hear me, we really don't know at this time. We preemptively leased four parking spaces on the adjacent property, the Helms Sun Valley property, thinking that would help us find a tenant this year. It has not. So, you know, if necessary, you know, we could do a parking study, continue the lease for the duration if it's an office tenant. But to simplify things, you know, the goal is probably to find a retail tenant, but we really have no prospect at this time. Yeah, okay, I understand. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, does Mr. Kemp want to join us? Yes, I will now open the mic. Mr. Kemp, are you with us? Mr. Kemp. Yes, I'm here. Okay, would you like to address the commission? Yes, I would. Thank you, commissioners, for hearing this project. I've been involved in this building since it changed from St. Vincent to Paul in the mid-2000s to have its home functions. And there's a couple things going through the commission's approval that I thought were a little excessive. There's conditions 9 and 10, which are stormwater-related. We're not doing any work outside the building. Everything is internal except for a couple windows and an entryway. So we're not planning to disturb any of the sites. I just know that having these kind of requirements can take time and money on the applicant's part and the owner's part to get through that process. So I just think that it would be great if you guys could take a look at that. So the public who may be listening into this, those are the items having to do with the drainage plan and the stormwater management plan? Correct. Okay. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is that in staff's report, they talked about the ceiling heights of the building. And yes, at the rear of the building where the apartments are, the ceiling height is lower at the rear. But I just wanted to point out that the main retail floor has a ceiling height of about 12 feet. So I just wanted to make people aware of that. Other than that, I'm available for questions. Any questions of Mr. Kemp? None. Thank you very much. And has anyone else in the meantime indicated a desire to address the commission from the public? There are no additional... So I'll close the public hearing conditionally again. If anybody pops up, we'll reopen. Commissioners, anyone want to start out here? Go ahead, Courtney. Oh, no, I was just going to say that I think this is a really great use of this building. I agree with the conditions, but I just think that making it a mixed-use building seems like a very great solution. I just wanted to offer support. Okay. And Commissioner Ruth, you were going to... Actually, I was going to say what Courtney said, so I don't need to say anything. All right. Good. Second, you have to start with Courtney. Commissioner Wilk or Welch? Commissioner Wilk has a question. I guess more a question of staff. Based on the builder's comments about conditions 9 and 10, were these boilerplate conditions, or was there some thought put into the need for a stormwater and drainage plan? They are boilerplate conditions, but I believe, if I look back, I took out this afterwards, but I believe they were specifically requested by the Public Works Department because there have been some concerns in the past on the site related to drainage in the back, kind of flooding those garage parking areas. I believe it was addressed through some kind of a surfacing plan, but I believe that's why they wanted to see those stormwater plans to make sure that the drainage and stormwater will function without causing issues in that residential garage. Do you believe that there's any 
existing uh, stormwater drainage plan that needs to be dusted off and looked at again? I believe that they could probably do that from my understanding of the, the history of this back parking lot. Thank you. And, and I will add that um, the condition number 10 says, to the satisfaction of the Director of Public Works. And I'm sure Director Jesper would be happy to work with the applicant so they don't go beyond what's necessary. Um, but I would suggest leaving that condition in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Welch, did you have any thoughts on this? I have uh, no further comment. I think it's good project. Uh, I understand the uh, conditioning and I agree with uh, the, the two on uh, how we condition that. So I just want to take a look at it. If you want to make a motion. Uh, I just said, uh, let me just chime in here today. I agree with Commissioner Christensen that I, I think this is a terrific uh, uh, concept for the property. The only thing I question is how we handle this uh, issue of uh, satisfying the parking requirements for retail use, but not for in office use. And uh, the way the con condition reads, if I'm reading it correctly, that. If they want to put an office in there, then they have to do another parking study to show that uh, they have another space someplace else that uh, is acceptable. And I guess the staff would be, I mean, can't we just approve this for a retail use and if, if they decide they have an office tenant uh, address it at that time? Uh, you could, except as I mentioned in the staff report, that there's no permitting for a use change like that, so there would be no reason we would even have no uh, commercial uh, office use that you don't even have to But it could not permit is this is a conditional use permit, right? Mm hmm Okay, and make it a conditional use permit for just a retail use? Uh, you could. Um, and then they could, uh, if they want to do an office use, might be, you know, maybe it wouldn't even be a parking site. I mean, say we've got spaces there and there, and it's us that way and save some time and money. I think that's so, a matter of condition these for a modification in that yeah. circumstance for the office to add the office use to it. So there may be more, more work and time and money. Yeah. Here, for the new uh, Commissioner Wilch, I, I would be willing just to add a condition that. If it is using the office space that they have not leased in place, that we don't go back to another parking study. And it could just, to me, it seems like it could be something that would have happen at the county and so then we come back to the planning commission. So I don't know I, if it works. I agree with uh, Commissioner Welch. I just, I feel like giving them as many tools as possible to get their um, commercial space leased and rented and occupied is pretty paramount in their interest, you know? Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, our, all, all we really need to say is that if they, if they do a retail use, they're fine. If they do an office use, they need to uh, arrange for another space. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the reason the parking study requirement is in there is that the, the adjacent property Helm actually does not have sufficient parking currently to provide one extra space to them. Uh, the code specifically reads that, you know, required parking for one parcel cannot be used for the, another parcel's requirements. So they have to prove that the other lot actually has an excess space. Um, and we actually know because we, we dug into that as part of this in the early part of our discussion that um, that adjacent lot does not have the space. They do have a plan that I think they're going to pursue eventually that would add, uh, I forget how many spaces, like nine spaces maybe to that helm lot. Um, and at that time they would have extra spaces to lease, but currently they do not have an extra space. So. So what could we study do? Yeah, I, I think uh, we could change the terminology that they need a lease from an adjacent property with adequate parking, with with yeah, available parking. And they would need to show that they've produced enough parking on that site if it's through lifts or some other mechanism to create more parking. But I, they may not have to go so far as a study unless they were trying to prove that a mixed use in some fashion could yeah, decrease the use or something. Yeah, but I think we could say well, lease. The reason that it covers both the helm lot and the office lot, because the office lot actually has, on the other side, has a much larger parking lot that potentially could have spaces, but there's a, there are quite a few different uses in there, and I, we would have to do a study to determine what the parking intensity or you know, requirements are for that large office building to determine whether that large parking lot has extra spaces as well. So 
No, no, that's why I leave. I think we should do what Katie said. We say that they need to, uh, if they switch it to office, they need to demonstrate they have enough to park in. We need to flexible and they can figure out how they want to do that. Anyone? Agree with that or disagree or? It's to me. I'm on board with that. All right, so we have a motion? I just want to follow up on one thing and uh, as uh, Director Hurley is, is we were talking about keeping condition 10, but we're okay with nine being um, taken out. I, I would suggest keeping them um, from what Matt said at the Arkan site meeting, this did come up, their conditions, Public Works always provides us with the conditions that they'd like on a permit. So although they seem standard, they, they did, they, Danielle always reviews the projects and attaches the conditions that are relevant. So if the Public Works Department can waive them if it's unnecessary as, um, Mr. Kemp was explaining, but at this point, let's, I think we should leave it on the permit and leave it up to public works whether or not there's the requirement has, has already been satisfied. Okay, with that, then I'll just make a motion that we approve uh, as staff's proposal with addition of a condition on the parking for office to be uh, determined by the uh, tenant showing that they have an adequate parking. Yes. Just second that. Okay, any further discussion? Then we'll do a roll call. Commissioner uh, Welch? Aye. Commissioner Root? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. And I vote aye, so that's unanimous. Uh, and good luck. Good project. Next item is the Grand Avenue Pathway Improvements. This is an application for a coastal development permit for drainage improvements between Oakland and Hollister Avenue on the Grand Avenue Pathway in front of 100 Oakland Avenue and 404 Grand Avenue in the R1 Single Family Residential Zoning District. Project is in the coastal zone, obviously, and requires a coastal development permit. This is what we're actually doing. Uh, do we have any um, recusals on this? Commissioner Welch, are you okay on this one? Okay, yeah, I'm fine. I'm not fine. Five hundred feet. Crossed out to five hundred feet. Okay, good. Uh, staff report. Thank you. Uh, as stated, this is an uh, application for a coastal development permit or CDP for drainage improvements in the public right of way in front of the two residential properties in the single family residential zoning district. Uh, it is, as you see in the smaller blue box uh, to the bottom of the selection, it's actually right along the Grand Avenue pathway where the pathway used to be. Um, so this is on behalf of both those properties. On December 2nd, 2019, public works staff learned that a portion of the Grand Avenue pathway between Oakland and Hollister Avenues had failed with a complete loss of a section of pathway. This failure had been anticipated in 2017 when the city council authorized the closure of this section of pathway due to geologic instability. In response, the city authorized drainage improvements under an emergency coastal development permit that included a new drainage inlet, as shown here, and outfall on Hollister Avenue. The CD was subsequently approved by the Planning Commission in February of this year. Despite the drainage improvements, the failure site has continued to experience erosion due to soil exposure and partial surface flow towards the site. On September 28th, 28, 2020, the Community Development Director approved an emergency coastal development permit for drainage improvements. These improvements included a 12-inch deep concrete drainage ditch, hand grading and contouring the slope, slope reseeding, 
and removal of damaged materials from the pathway and private improvement. The applicant is also proposing landscaping of the disturbed areas and repair of a retaining wall. Those are subject to this CDP. They were not as, uh, included as part of the emergency CDP approval. The above site plan created for last winter's city improvements indicates the intended path of surface drainage. The current proposal will help restore a continuous path of travel for surface drainage between Hollister and Oakland Avenue. Of particular concern uh, in the, the original CDP as with this, this uh, fall um, post development permit is that area in red. Proposed site plan with a reverse orientation that shows the ocean at the top of the page and the bluff at the bottom. The proposed project includes drainage improvements completed under a emergency CDP. Under the Coastal Capital Municipal Code, a coastal development permit is required for repair and maintenance activities requiring the presence, whether temporary or permanent, of mechanized construction equipment or construction materials on any sand area or bluff or environmentally sensitive habitat area as defined by the Coastal Act or within 20 feet of the coastal waters or streams. The proposed work here is adjacent to the bluff along the former section of the Grand Avenue pathway. Therefore, a coastal water permit is required. A condition of approval has been added to reflect the Coastal Commission recommendation for last winter's improvements. It's uh, virtually the same condition requiring that to the best of their ability. Excuse me. The, the old material that's been that's overhung and has been damaged as a result of the failure be cleared uh, as much as safe as possible. Oh, Matt, can I ask you a question on that real quick? Hey, Matt? Uh, I think you need Sean. Or, oh, Sean. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the removal of those materials, to how big a distance back to the edge of the block are we talking about? Or are we just talking about items that are overhanging the block? We're talking about uh, items that have been affected as a result of the failure or are uh, almost you know about yeah so yeah basically things that are already impacted for example the new sequence slide some of the, the stress cracks and, and beginnings of failure okay for example the pictures you're showing the fence on the left that would be removed yes uh, okay. if they can use those safely yes okay thank you Matt, uh, oh sorry someone stopped to ask a question I believe Commissioner Christensen has her hand up. Well, what was that? Uh, that I, recommends the Planning Commission approved project based on conditions, approval, and findings. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we did cut you off right at the uh, important part of your presentation. <laughs> uh, all right, this is a public hearing, and uh, I'm guessing that we have someone from Public Works that would like to address us. You know, um, this application came in actually from the property owners to do the same work that uh, our public works department had done. So we do have the uh, two property owners and John Hart who um, actually did the work on available via Zoom. And it looks... So the city and the property owners are jointly uh, applicants here? You know, the property owners are the applicants here, and they've applied for an encroachment permit to do the work. Okay. So do we have uh, any property owners that, other than, I know we got some written uh, communication. Um, do we I, have anyone that wants to address us? Yes, it looks like John Hart, and then followed by Jim Castellanos. I'm going to, uh, I've just opened this up to John Hart. John, it's your turn to speak. John, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, good. 
Yeah, um, I'm on 404, what was now 404 Grand Avenue, which is the house sort of next to Jim's, which is 402 Grand Avenue. And um, I think it's important, if you have any questions about what we're planning on, I mean, the effort, et cetera, I, I, is, is uh, John David on the, a call? Because he would be, he's, our, he's the person that's basically doing all of this. So I would suggest that, I mean, he's the expert. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we've done up to now is we put in the V ditch so that the uh, flow of water will safely go around the, the opening and, and when it starts raining. And uh, what remains to be done is to see the, the area under it so that essentially we can you know, slow up erosion, et cetera and sort of re replace the plants that got all washed away. I mean, and so that's the, the only, the, what's left to be done is the seeding. Uh, that's all that remains to be done. And, um, but that was left for, to, to gain approval um, by the planning commission. And also we'll clear out, you know, any of the old pipes and things like that that's being done. But again, the details of this, is, can you tell if John David is on the uh, call or on the uh, Zoom? He is. So I, I might want to turn it, if, we, if you want a, a, any detailed discussion on the subject, I would suggest that he do the discussion, not me. Okay, well, we'll probably hear from him also. Okay, I'm, I'm, that's it. Okay. Okay, uh, and then we had someone else. Yes, next, I'm opening it to Jim Castellanos. Jim? Okay. Your turn. Yes. Can I hear me? We can hear you, Jim. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll echo John's sentiments, but our intent really is not to do anything obnoxious or that doesn't look good, but really just to slow the process of erosion down as long as we can and try to run out the clock. <laughs> That's our intent. So, you know, appreciate your understanding and cooperation. Thank you very much. But, uh, and John's right. Uh, John David from Prime Landscape has spearheaded the whole project, and uh, I think he's done a really great job. And he's he's done actually a lot of uh, erosion control work along the cliffs uh, in Santa Cruz County. And he's uh, he's a very knowledgeable guy, and uh, he's the one that needs to be speaking. So, anyway, thank you very much. Okay. So I guess that we're going to hear from John David if he's with us. Okay. Um, Mr. David. Okay. Mr. David, you're now. Is he uh, showing up on your uh, screen? You know, um, he's muted. Uh, I don't see him at all on mine. Yeah, I see him. John David, you need to. Um, He's muted. Uh, He's muted himself. Can you hear us? Hear you. Mr. David, if you can hear us, please unmute if you'd like to address us. No? Uh, okay. We'll, we'll come back to him. Oh, here we go. Mr. David? Yes. I, I believe he's not there anymore. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, conditionally close the public hearing, and we'll hear from him if he uh, shows up. Uh, commissioners' thoughts. I have one question, and under discussion in the uh, staff report, uh, item four state the landscaping of disturbed areas, fencing, and restoration of a stone retaining wall. Are some of those items, for example, the stone retaining wall, are they encroaching into the public property? Anyone? Planner Sasanto? Yeah, my opinion. Okay. Well, I, I'm just curious if, if if the stone retaining wall is encroaching, why would we, the city, be repairing it? 
You're not. That's not what the item says. So um, uh, this work, area. this work is being. The applicants that are responsible for this work, the city isn't actually conducting any of this. Okay. Okay, that clears it up. Okay. Please. This is Commissioner Will. They uh, just heard me the receding of the landscape here. Uh, are there conditions on that, like native uh, native plants, anything like that? Um, or are we going to get complaints that people looking up at the cliffside do some horrible, non-invasive whatever up there? Sean here again. Uh, the seeding varieties were listed in the work synopsis that is on one of the attachments. So that is what they would be following. Did Daniel, you carry it or anybody take a look at that to make sure that those were acceptable plants? Um, I'm going so, to. Did you hear that? They're California native grasses, all or six, six species. Okay, yeah, I'll, that's what I was looking for, some, some reassurance that they were California okay. native species. Thank you. So now we have John David on the line, if you have any specific questions for him. <laughs> and that was John okay. David speaking. Yeah, sorry, I don't know how I lost you. But um, for me to finish, all we wanted to do would be to initiate vegetation on both sides of the V ditch as needed and on the face. So, there's just a little bit of cleanup, a couple of posts to be cut off. Um, we were going to do that one. Oh, you know, there's, there's just a big chunk of, of the pavement that's still left, the asphalt pavement that already has a big fissure behind it. So we're, we're wanting to be cautious and not uh, do too much. We don't really want a lot of uh, compression, a lot of um, uh, jet camp. Well, looks like we found him and we lost him. But I think that's the gist of it. Yeah. Okay, if he comes gets back on, we'll we'll let him finish. In the meantime, do we have any other commissioner thoughts on this before we go to a vote? Yeah, chairperson, I mean, you know, I'd like to say a couple things. And, uh, Sean, if we could go to the picture that kind of showed the overview of the plot from two different views. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, well, the one that was the overhead view. Yeah, that, that works good enough. So, uh, in the upper left hand corner is where this last failure was. The original failure that caused the closing of the block is actually in the lower right hand, which is uh, further to the uh, east of, of this location. And, uh, I think it was a little bit of a surprise that that area went before uh, the suspected area where the drain is put uh, on the lower right hand picture. But part of that is I think the maintenance of, of that um, pathway and the water was getting behind, as you can see, where that uh, red circle was around and, and caused this problem. That, that area, the, the city property line actually goes to Mr. Castellino. But kind of follows along that if you can see right above the red circle is a fence line and it kind of goes right behind there's a little fire pit by the bench there i just happened to be on the planning commission when that project came through and so uh, that said the city property uh, see that thing and one of my concerns has always been is what have we done and what is the coastal commission allow us to do to protect these properties we, we've lost our roads and now I'm slowly eating away at these properties and probably one of my uh, biggest contentions with the Coastal Commission is, I'm sure the other commissioners know, is um, the ability for us to protect that. In fact, uh, the city of Capitola has a Depot Hill Plus safety and protection measure. Uh, and if you read the purpose of it, it's to uh, promote the stabilization of the Depot Hill Plus 
lines are bad, no lines are very good so and thereby uh, enhance the safety of those persons who walk above and uh, below the steep oil hill bluff. And it talks about going to also protecting the pro property and the structure uh, in the vicinity of the deep oil bluff. And honestly, I, I think the Coastal Commission has hampered us and um, and you know, it's unfortunate understand the need for the property owners to actually have to take this to their own hands and that's probably some of the uh, questions that my fellow commissioners have on uh, how this is coming through and it's actually not the city doing this, this is uh, the property owners doing this work which um, obviously they have a vested interest in doing that. So I fully support it. Uh, I, I, I hope that we look at that water that comes out of that deep ditch comes down the street and it does slow a little bit uh, off the ground going towards open, but um, it seems to me like we still need to be concerned about the drainage on that hill as a whole. And I would, I'd like to see uh, the city council just stay on top of this. It, 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 you know, these are our residents, and uh, I think we need to do our best to uh, take care of that area as, as long as we can, as Mr. Castellano said, talked about until uh, the time is ticking, we <coughs> want to keep it there as long as we can. I support it. Um, I wish I wish we could have done more, and I just hope that the city will do its best to take care of the water that comes out of the leakage to make sure it doesn't affect any residents. So, kind of said that I'll let some of those people. Okay. Well, I have a question. This is Commissioner Wilk, and maybe this is more for staff, but one of the letters we got, I think it was from Mr. Skip Allen, talked about a lot of a lot of issues that really, to me, just weren't directly a pertinent to this particular thing. If we wanted to address those, you talked about hedges and all kinds of things. Uh, is it appropriate to be, bring those up as part of this motion, or should we? Uh, should uh, if she had, <laughs> should she bring those to staff and put those on the agenda? I'm just confused about procedure and how to address this concern. Yes. I'd be happy to. Um, I discussed this with the public works director today of how would we handle the removal of encroachments of, of uh, revoke, how would we revoke, you know, one of our revocable encroachment permits. And we could do that. It would not be part of this, but we, you could ask us to bring forward a revocable encroachment permit for review if there were an item that, um, say for a safety issue, you felt it should be removed um, we, we could definitely bring that to the Planning Commission for review. But it, it wouldn't... I'm not sure I followed that. You're saying that I, this fellow should, should bring up oh. uh, an item if, if it was a legitimate concern with the Coastal Commission or with safety, uh, bring that forward to staff and then staff would bring it forward to the Planning Commission? Well, okay, so I, I believe the Planning Commission could ask us to bring that up. Um, let me let me do some quick research to make I, make sure I get you 100% the right answer. But it would be something that would come back to you for review. I I'm not exactly sure of how it would get called up to the Planning Commission if it would be a City Council action or um, the Public Works Director suggesting that it go back before Planning Commission. But all of these larger items that are along the bluff, the improvements. Um, had to be should have been approved by the Planning Commission, so it would be their, I believe it's Planning Commission's review to revoke the permit. But I'll, I'll check on that while we okay, discuss. Okay, so I'm okay with you coming back to it at some later time. I think it is clear that most of his comments, not all of them, don't apply to this particular application. But but I would hate to choose no harm. So if we can bring it up at some other time, I'm happy with that. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Well, I only, I'll just say uh, briefly that I only uh, am um, amused by these applications when the genie's already out of the bottle. I mean, what happens if we deny this permit? Work's already done. Um, I guess they have to put it back the way it was. But I'm just being facetious, but uh, it just seems odd to me. But I guess that's the process. I think it would 
would be easier if the city just abandoned that property. Well, it's very sad that it's losing it, but... I would be facetious by saying I think the city abandoned it a long time ago, that's why we're where we're at. I would like to make a motion that we approve the plan, I commend the gentleman for trying to turn his own property, and then I would like to add a condition that the the city public works does address water issue that's coming out of this drainage um, and make sure it's not going to impact any other property. Well, I think that's a good idea, but I don't know that it really uh, fits to the application here. Because if that's a condition you're not imposing on the applicants, right? That's, that's true. I'm going back to what Skip's request was, and kind of what we've been talking about this whole thing is. I would just make a suggestion that there would be half done. Yeah, I think public works needs to uh, take a look at how we're doing the drainage. Uh, I would say, if I have a motion that we can have uh, ask the city to pass those sentiments on. Well, I would like to put something in my motion that addresses the fact that public works is addressed in one way or the other if the water comes out of this uh, drainage ditch. I think it's appropriate. Uh, we, they've taken the water um, from this pathway to protect their properties, and it's being directed into Oakland Street now and the rest of Green. So I think it would be appropriate for um, a request to public works to address the water issue coming from that. This, this is not the applicant's water. This is uh, in the city right away. Now, they may have taken the, the initiative to do the work there because they're trying to protect the property, but this is city property. This is not, this is not the applicant's property that they're doing this work with. So I think that Public Works, uh, the city council has uh, some play in this, and I think they should address it. Okay. <laughs> My my understand. No, I I think I understand that. So that's why I can change it to saying uh, a condition, but request that the public works address the water that's run off from uh, this. Uh, they ask the applicant to uh, appeal to the public works department to do that. Um. I Director Jesberg will be has yeah. Public Works will be monitoring the water um, and keeping an eye on you know the change in flow. So they, I know that is part of the plan. With once this work is done, um, they plan on monitoring. So. Okay, can we just put that word in there? The public Works will monitor the water coming from this area. I assume you talked to uh, Steve about them. Yeah, Steve, Steve has said that they'll be monitoring the, wa the water based on um, our conversation. I, I don't know if it's... I would just like to capture that um, you, this water that's coming onto these other properties are going to affect the properties of uh, the owners there, but it's on the city. It's on the city property leading to be able to handle that, that water. Um, I, I understand we're having a conversation about it, but I'd like to see it captured somehow, uh, whether it's in the minutes. Um, obviously, uh, we don't want to make it a condition against us with the applicant uh, or the homeowner. So um, I think I spend enough time talking. Yeah, I, I think capturing that in the minutes is appropriate. I agree with that, Julie. So I think that's yeah. the function gets to the end. After my motion, was, my motion would be to approve uh, the permit as um, outlined by staff. Yeah, we say. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Welch. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that's unanimous. Uh, next is the director's report. Okay, thank you. Um, 
This evening, I just have one update for you that the city council j just adopted a code of conduct. Um, and I was going to distribute that to the planning commission. And then I thought it would be appropriate in the new year that we could spend some time uh, introducing what the code of conduct is. But I will send that out in an email tomorrow. Um, and then so you all have time to review it. And once um, with the recent election, and I'm not sure exactly um, if Tita is going to be <laughs> volunteering with the new council member to partner up. But anyway, at this point, I'm not sure exactly which planning commissioners we'll have moving forward. So I thought it'd be more appropriate to go over this in the new year, but I did want to let you know that it has been adopted and I will circulate. Other than that, um, the only new update I have that's the COVID-19 related in terms of land use is that we put out um, direction or guidance for tents and we worked really closely with Central Fire on that. Um, and so guidance went out to all the businesses a little over a week ago and at this point, I, Sean, can you let me, was there one application so far that's come in to the city for, the, for a tent? I've had uh, a number of inquiries, none have come in to me yet. Okay. I'm expecting. Yeah. So with the winter months approaching and uh, the desire to keep warm, um, we've put out some guidance and there's fire ratings that need to be followed and heating and there's, uh, we tried to keep it simple, but due to the, um, the dangers of wind and fire, there's quite a few, um, specific, uh, building related and fire related guidance in there. So we'll, we'll see whether or not they're utilized, but that guidance has been published and is available and those permits of course are free because it's COVID related and any tent that goes up will be inspected by our building official and also uh, the fire marshal. And that concludes the director's report. Any commissioner communications? Yeah, does the planning commission have any comments on, the, on adding tents to the, to the outdoor fee? Or is that just for information? That was an informational update. Um, do you have any comments on them? I'd be happy to. I mean, the, the purpose, that's all. I'd be curious to know what the county health officials talk about creating enclosures outdoors. So you're only allowed to have one wall within these tents. So um, it's really not a full enclosure. It's just one wall can get closed. Otherwise, it has to be 75% open. So the idea of these being really warm is, it depends on the heating source they use, but you can't have any open flame under these either. So I, I'm not sure that the tent will be any better than just having the open air with the nice propane heaters to keep folks warm. So I'm not sure if this is gonna take off, but it's an option if wanted, um, but it does have to remain 75% open. I've seen this. I've seen this done in uh, Little Italy in New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they do is they have like drop down walls that roll up that aren't rigid that you could run through. You could get out if you need be. That might be something to consider. So that they roll up when it's nice. They drop down when it's cold. the COVID problem the issue, but yeah. uh, Crow's Nest has it right now. Crow's Nest has a very large tent uh, on the beach that has seating, and um, it's, it's a very comfortable place to have dinner, even in the cooler weather. So hopefully it helps our uh, our businesses and, and those to uh, do well. Okay. So are we going to have a meeting in December? Yes. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, so that will be, since we are going to have some uh, changes in the uh, makeup of the commission, possibly, that will be our last meeting for this commission as presently constituted, unless everyone is uh, brought back by 
trying to counsel people, but I guess we'll see you all in first week in December. And uh, unless anyone has anything further, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye.